Yo, what's going on everybody? It's Straight to the Boston here, and today I'm back for episode number 7 of my NHL 16 Be a Pro here featuring Percy Bunyan. So today we're simulating forward to the next user game I'm going to play, and apparently I got injured at some point. I think it was in the simulation at some point. I got a concussion, but uh, it would not last. You can see I uh, did come back in like a day or so, so it was a very mild concussion apparently. But uh, the Oilers continuing, continuing to play relatively well, you know, we're 22, 22, and 6 at this point. And we get Ben Scrivens back, that is good, so we won't have to have that crap goalie, uh, you know, goaltend for us anymore. We do lose to Columbus, but we've got a game against Ottawa coming up, I am going to play this game. And uh, this was a pretty nice game, i got to say, I have a couple really nice highlight goals. So you guys are going to want to stay tuned for that, but... Anyway, we're taking on the Ottawa Senators. So Ottawa, obviously, uh, you know, a team that I think could be pretty good this year. Uh, they had a really good second half last year. Of course, they got red hot and made the playoffs. They did lose to the uh, Canadians in the playoffs. But if they get their goaltending situation uh, settled out, they have a lot of good uh, forward and defensive talent. So we'll see. I have a lot of high expectations for them this year. But uh, we'll see how their season plays out now. Uh, we lose the face off there. It's going to be a dump on the power player. I should say a dump on the penalty kill for Ottawa. And look at this. Scrivens comes out of his net. And, oh my god, this was just so frustrating. Colin Greening. And I can't, I mean, it feels like this stuff happens every other game when I'm playing with the Oilers. I mean, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's actually a thing in the game, but it feels like the Oilers have, like, a stupid rating. And their stupid rating is very, very high. But, anyway, on the power play, still here. Got some more opportunities, but I can't get the cross crease to go there. Here we go, though. A good goal scoring opportunity. Windmill deke right around the defender. I try to get that one back across the hall. He had a wide open net to shoot at, but a good defensive play. But here we go. I get the puck back here, and then I'm going to go right around the defender. Five hole, and I score. So the game is tied. A nice goal right there. Uh, right around the defender, and then a little uh, backhand, forehand to the backhand. And then I actually didn't try to put a five hole, but it ended up going five hole. So a pretty nice individual effort right there, and I knocked the game up at one. As I said, five hole right through Craig Anderson. That was a pretty soft goal, I gotta say. But uh, poor defensive play. I don't know what uh, number two was doing there for Ottawa. Either way, here we go, though. Six minutes into the first period here. Greening coming up, and oh, I missed the big hit on Greening. I could have killed him right there, but instead he uh, makes a nice move around it. And then a nice cross crease opportunity to Taylor Hall, but uh, that is stopped. And now here we go, bringing it up the ice. Windmill Deke right around, and another highlight goal. This one was ridiculous. We got to take a look at the replay. Oh, my God, splitting the defense and then right past Anderson. Oh, my God, and it was Eric Carlson, no less. Oh, my goodness, what a play. I mean, take a look at this one. It was on the power play. Clark MacArthur was in the box, but look at this right around Carlson. And then uh, Anderson dropped down into the butterfly there, so I put it top shelf. And uh, we make it 2-1, to one. so a pretty nice goal right there from Bunyan, I got to say. Here we go, though, 9-16 left to play in the first. It's a good opportunity for Ottawa, but I get a big hit on by, I think that was Borowiecki right there, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, shot from the point there. I get my stick on that one, a nice deflection opportunity, but Anderson stops it nonetheless. Now later in the first, it's a face-off win. Eberle gives it to Schultz, back to Eberle, to Sakara on net. Another deflection opportunity, but this one goes wide. So later, now it's the second period. We've got a two-on-one opportunity. Hall gives it to me, and I should have given it right back to Hall there. Good defensive play. It was a nice step up by uh, whoever that was on Ottawa, and it uh, broke up the two-on-one opportunity. So here we go. And now later in the second, Mathot gives it over to CC and a one-timer, Bobby Ryan. I think that was he puts it right past the goal. And yes, it was Bobby Ryan snipes that one home. So Ottawa's got a 3-2 lead now. And then oh my God, that was a bad interference penalty. I honestly thought that that guy still had the puck. I didn't see that it had trickled up the boards, but you'll see on the replay, it's pretty clear. You can see the puck has passed him. I seriously thought he had the puck, though. I didn't mean to interfere with him. I initially thought I got called for boarding, but it turns out it was interference, so... Here we go now after I'm out of the box. Still a 3-2 game. And another nice opportunity there, but a good stop. But Anderson actually lost the puck there for a second. Then Anderson uh, was able to stop the second chance. Here we go, though. I got the puck. I'm going to take a slapper. Good save with the blocker. And now here we go into the uh, second half of the second period here. Yakupov got, has got it on his own boards to Eberle. Oh, and I should have kept going with that one. I should have held on to that like a half second longer. I could have gotten around Anderson. But... In inpatient play on my part, and then a good defensive play by Mathot there. And then I level someone here. Borowiecki's going to fight me, but check this out. Borowiecki, he had no idea what was coming. I'm going to get a couple. I get, you know, one early right hand. He's doing a good job of ducking, but check this out. I spin him around, and then boom, a knockout blow right there, just like that. So Borowiecki is taken care of, and Bunyan's going to go to the box. Four or five big ones there into the third now. It's still a 3-2 to two game. And Clefbaum turns it over. Craig Smith now coming up. Or uh, Zach Smith, excuse me. Not Craig Smith. What am I saying here? Smith puts it home. There's Zane Smith. Not Zach Smith. What am I saying here? I don't even know what I'm saying. But 
Smith puts it home. 42 game now. Scrivens continuing to play like Ben Scrivens, which is just horrible. But here we go. Another nice opportunity. That one is stopped by Anderson, but the rebound is put home. And so I do get credit with an assist on that one, even though uh, I guess I guess I should get credit for putting that one in front of the net and centering that pass. But still, that was all Eberly. And uh, makes it a 4-3 to three game, though. Here we go. Coming up, another nice opportunity. A pass to the slot, but Everly can't put that one home. It's kind of a tough angle shot anyway. Then Yakupov shoots that one wide. everly has got it, though, behind his own net in front of Yakupov. But again, a nice stop by Anderson. Four minutes to play. And Anderson holding on to that one goal lead. We're still on the power play, though. I'm going to get this one centered. Try to put it on net. Actually, I give it to Everly there. I thought I was going to shoot that one, but I gave it to Everly instead. It's stopped by Anderson, and then... Ottawa scores another one. They make it a 2 0 game. It's Bobby Ryan once again. This one was a pretty pathetic on Scrivens' part. He just tried to pass that one out and it turned it right over, so it was an easy goal. Once again, playing with the Oilers, never any fun. But I do get the hat trick here, although this one was just a lucky goal. This is one of those Ian goals that I've talked about in the past. But um, I actually tried to pass this one to Taylor Hall because he was on the other side of the net. And instead, it went in somehow. I don't know how. It was a really dumb angle, but it goes in. I can't explain it, as you can see. Just sort of puts that one home. <laughs> so uh, I'll take it, I guess. And we do get the hat trick, but we do get the loss as well. 5-4 to four is the final. Ottawa wins this one, and we don't even pick up a point. So uh, disappointing loss there for Edmonton. I thought we should have won that one. But a good game from Bunyan, and I think he was the first star. Yes, he was, despite the loss. Three goals and an assist will get you that first star. So take a look at the stats here. 15 shots. Look at the high volume of shots right there. That is, uh, I thought that was a pretty impressive stat right there, getting that many shots on net. So the next game ready to be playing is against the Minnesota Wild. We've got uh, about a week and a half or so to simulate up to get to that point, though. Actually, pretty much a full two weeks in between the Ottawa game and the Minnesota game. But uh, anyway, we take a loss to Toronto there, and uh, it looks like Justin Schultz is going to be out for a little while. Winnipeg, 14-32-8 uh, and eight so far. They're having a horrendous year. We take care of them. And we get moved down to the second line. I honestly don't know why or how this keeps happening, but... Whatever, uh, no big deal. I am going to miss playing with Taylor Hall and Jordan Everly, but I'm sure I'll get back there at some point. And Ben Scrivens gets hurt again, so that is just great. Now we're going to have that uh, like 72 overall goalie back. But here we're going to take a look at some of the stats this year. So we're currently second on the team in points behind Jordan Everly and uh, first on the team in shots as well. I think we have 50 more shots than the next closest guy. So, yep, it sounds like second line stuff to me, but uh, whatever, Todd McClellan, you, you do you. So we're taking on Minnesota. As I said, we got a home game this time around up in snowy Edmonton, Alberta from Rexall Place. Minnesota's 20, 30, or, uh, 30, 20, and 7 so far this year. So they're off to a pretty good start here. We get a nice opportunity early on uh, with a shot in front of the net. I noticed, I mentioned earlier in the game, but I mentioned it earlier in the episode, I think, but, uh, you know, trying to just let the game come to me a little bit more, not try to force things. And uh, there I actually made a pretty nice pass to the slot, though. Hall could not bury that one. Then here we go, coming up across the defense. I tried to go cross crease. Actually, I shot that one. Excuse me. I thought I tried to go cross crease, but I just flicked it back, and I probably should have passed that one. Here I pass this one, and that's going to be an assist. That one was buried. That is Benoit Pouliot. So back playing with Benoit Pouliot, of course, not exactly my favorite line mate to play with, but... Yeah, you, know, you just got to deal with who you got to deal with, and, you know, it is fun playing with Yakupov, so I'll take that, but anyway, Pouliot does bury this one. He, you know, he's got a big body. He can get in front of the net, and I mean, if, if I give it, if I give him that pass over and over again, I'm sure he'll bury it at least 50% of the time, although I don't know, it's Benoit Pouliot, so who knows, but here we go now coming up again, and we get another one-time opportunity, but this time the defender gets a stick on that one, and we couldn't get that one through, so it remains one to nothing here late in the first. Get a nice shot block there. Now early in the second, we get a good steal, and I put the shot on net, but Dubnik is there to make the save. And now later in the second period, here we coming up. It's Yakupov, and you guys know Yakupov doesn't usually make the best passes. Oh, that was a pretty sick one. I just whiffed a shot there. I went high glass. I really had the open net, too. It was a nice in-and-out move. And then Yakupov hits the post right there. So uh, Yakupov playing pretty well this game. And uh, like I said, Yakupov really doesn't make the best passes. Like, I like playing with him because he's got a great shot, of course, but his, like, hockey sense and his passing and his, like, you know, puck handling, really not that great. But that passed that other couple possessions ago. That was pretty nice, so... Here we go now. I get the in front to, uh, I think this is Purcell now on the power play, but he can't bury that one. And then Yakubov steals that in front. Eberly puts it in, so we retake the lead 3-2. to two. I get a plus on that. No point there, but we do take the plus for our rating. And now here we go on the power play coming up, trying to go around the defense in front of the net, but the second defender, I think that was Ryan Sutter, 
came over just in time to uh, stop the play right there. And then in front again, and this time, I'm not sure if that pass was intended for me, if it was intended for Purcell, but either way, a nice play, and Purcell gets it home. So we get the lead once again, no point for me, but I am a plus three tonight, and I make that a plus two as Minnesota comes right back and ties it up. That uh, was, I'm not sure who that was actually, but here we go in front again. This time it's an inaccurate pass. I get the rebound opportunity on net, but to no luck here, to no avail. Three minutes left to play. Oh, between the legs, in front. Oh, and Pouliot could not put that one home. And then here we go in the three-on-three -three overtime. And boom, I lay out the Minnesota Wild defender right there. I think that was, uh, I'm not sure who that was either, actually. I don't know. Uh, all the players on the Minnesota Wild, of course, by number at least. But here we go in front of the net, and this is really... I, I really don't like playing this 3-on-3 three three overtime in NHL 16 because they only put out um, one forward and two defenders, so it's really hard to score goals. And then here we go, round five of the shootout. Uh, that would be the first goal scored by either side, and then Edmonton is stomped on the other end, so Minnesota comes away with the victory, but we do get a point out of it for the shootout loss. So uh, we'll take that in Minnesota. That's pretty good. I mean, Minnesota's a pretty... Actually, no, this game is in Edmonton, excuse me. I was just playing around with the jerseys we got the green on orange look there but uh anyway so only one point for me that game we just had the one assist uh although my line did score a couple times but look at Yakupov with three assists could have had four if I hadn't whiffed on that or if I hadn't airmailed that shot on the breakaway but either way that's gonna do it so hope you guys did enjoy thanks for watching this episode and I'm out peace